As you may know, I am a tarot reader, not much of a tarot collector though. So this year I have not bought any tarot or oracle decks yet, apart from this one, and I'm very excited about it. It is a vintage out of print one. I am prepared with the scissors. So this is very simply an unboxing. It's about the Kazanlar tarot. I am excited about this one. It's probably my most expensive deck yet. I think that's right. But you know, I um, have not bought any other decks this year yet, so maybe I am, you know, staying with, sticking with that, uh, what was it again? Quality over quantity thing. So this is a very special deck. Unfortunately, the large book wasn't available with it, but I bought this secondhand, obviously. It's a, it's no longer made. This deck is no longer made. But, ah. <laughs> Filled with uh, all that bubble wrap around it. I know that the seller knew what he was selling, and I knew what I was buying, so. Oh, it's so cute. Look at that box. <laughs> Kazanlar Tarot. Okay, so it's made in Switzerland by AGM Mueller, Neuhausen, um, English edition, and it says on the back, the spiritual roots of tarot are to be found in the three great monotheist religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. In his convincing interpretation, Dr. Emil Kazanlar reveals new and unexplored connections with these religions. 78 beautifully designed cards and instruction booklet. I love this box. It's a beautiful temperance card, isn't it? And I love these colors and there's this whole vibe that is very Marseille reminiscent, but um, also very detailed. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, look at these cards. They look brand new. See that? What? Okay. This is the back. These are the backs of the cards. Beautiful, very bright violet blue. Oof, I like that. And um, this is the booklet. Now we'll, we'll, we'll check it out later. I am not like other <laughs> tarot um, unboxing well videos. Um, I like to dive into the cards immediately. So they are, I knew that, smaller and thinner than regular, regular sized tarot cards. And here we have, um, I think, significator cards. They do not seem to be in order. So I'm just quickly going to do that and get back with you. Wow. <laughs> okay, I just had to figure it out. They are in order, so we can continue. Now, let's start with the majors. In this deck, the Fool apparently is numbered 20 seconds, so it's supposed to be after the World card. And it's um, different um, correspondences with the Hebrew letters, as I know in the Toth, but I like that it's a black dog. I have to so much to learn here and so much to unpack and so much to look at also. Do you see the amount of detail that is in this deck, in these cards? This is just... Wow. And so in the bottom, it's um, they all have this kind of 
border around the little border that is different in each card I believe and per perhaps you know according to the suits as well and around that there is this kind of like a gold but like old school gold just like my golden rider you know it's it, they say it's gold border but actually it looks more like bronze and then it's in four languages here I'd say um, English French German and what would that be um, maybe Hungarian because I thought this was an Hungarian deck so that's fun I get to learn Hungarian okay so that's the fool let's do a bit of a flip through Wow, oh, these are quirky, has a quirky personality. Oh wow, I love that blue. It's beautiful. There is so much to look at. Oh, beautiful. So this is the prophet, prophet instead of the Hierophant or the Pope. And I'm pretty sure you know that there's a an entire story in each of these majors. This is a very Marseille looking lover's scene. Choosing. And then it looks like there's this figure behind this I think younger looking woman. I'm not sure. <laughs> Each of these cards has like a new, um, I don't know, feeling with these different colors and different setting. He has this mask as a sort of a crown that he wears like a crown with horns and teeth. And wow, look at that eye there. <gasps> Obviously, justice is very a serious energy, but there is a lot of color and texture and depth. Okay, so I've just noticed that within the borders of the card, there is the French title there, so l'ermite. So even if it says so far English um, deck, within the borders, within the artwork, it's definitely in French. So maybe this is a Marseille-based deck. You know, I'm not going to say that this is Marseille because uh, <sighs> this is what the pips look like. Beautiful, by the way. You know, it's just like people nowadays saying that the Mary L, which is a deck I don't have, but it's really something beautiful, something very strong, say that the Marie Mary L is a Marseille deck. It's obviously not, okay? Marseille deck is when there are these very Marseille-style pips. My favorite deck, the Triomphe de la Luna Paradoxical, is hardly a Marseille. <laughs> it's just, it just has this Marseille, you know, formation of the pips. Obviously, Marielle doesn't have that, so it's not a Marseille deck, but perhaps the meaning of those cards, uh, of the typical Marseille meanings, comes, you know, comes through in the Marielle deck. I have a feeling that this deck holds more Marseille, typical Marseille meanings. Just look at these colors. I love it. It's like me today, like trying to rock um, darker primary colors. <laughs> so there's this, it's, it's, you know, like different sides of the color wheel and that's how different colors work together. La route fortune. La force. Oh. Have you ever seen such a cool strength card? And it is, right? Looks very Marseille with that lemniscate hidden in the um hidden in the hat and she's trying to open the lion's um mouth. And all of, of course uh, we've already seen in the I believe High Priestess this very checkered um floor that's very Marseille like as well. Ooh, it's very nocturnal hanged man. Ah, 
Oh, the death looks very pink for a death card. Or actually, yes, it's just Arcanum number 13. It's the unnamed Arcana. So perhaps the Fool... No, we already know that the Fool is numbered 22. But you know, in the Marseille that I know at least, the Fool would be um, unnumbered. And then the death... Or well, the Arcanum number 13 would be unnamed. So we have one unnamed card and one unnumbered card. Here is the beautiful picture on the box. The Temperance. La Tempérance, I guess? Yes. I think there are different ways of saying it. Okay, I like this devil. Very Baphomet-like. <laughs> this looks like a, an incredible, um, I'd say, you know, hand-woven carpet, doesn't it? It's beautiful piece of art, and there's an eye. Looks like it's the sun, actually. There's an eye right there. Destroying the top of the tower, or taking off the crown of the tower. Ow. Oh, such a dreamy star. The beautiful colors again and there's so much detail i'd say sometimes even a little bit too much but it looks like it's a an entire um starry sky the sky filled with stars okay so i already knew i was going to love this because of the whole theme of this deck beautiful moon card <sighs> I love this frame also around it. I am a fan of borders, you may know. And here we have the sun. Okay, the soleil. Oh, yeah. Well, this reminds me more of the Toth, actually, because there are two people. And the entire signs of the zodiac. And this is le jugement. We recognize this right away Smith imagery here, I'd say. But of course, the right away Smith, you know, derives a lot from the Marseille. And there are all these yods or yodes, I don't know, yods, I think, that are falling on these people. <sighs> and then I love it. This is a weird thing, but I love it when the world card, Le Monde, is actually a perfect circle rather than that oval. Now, there is something beautiful about the oval as well because then it kind of looks like an egg and I have this whole personal egg meditation thing, but just the... I don't know, just that perfect circle is something that I enjoy very much as well. Look at that lion's face. <laughs> wow, quite something. Yeah, I was getting a little bit dark there in the frame, still trying to figure out this camera. I think I'm doing an okay job <laughs> I'm saying that now, but you know, we'll see. Um, Gone through the majors, let's look at the little booklet. It only says Casanlar Tarot by Emile Casanlar. The ecumenical tarot. The ecumenical attitude allows that different religions lead equally to God. The tarot is an old ecumenical tradition which contains holy symbols of God that recur in similar forms in all the great religions, since God permitted his people to worship him in different ways, although he is the same God for all and everywhere. The Old Testament was referred to by the Hebrew Kabbalah, which represents the origin, or one of the origins, of the tarot, since it gave rise to the mystical letter and number systems. The New Testament as well contains the symbols of the old. Likewise, the Quran contains passages 
whose headings consist of one or more letters, the meanings of which are certainly no different from those of the secret Kabbalistic letter system in the older monotheistic traditions. I was born in Iran of a father of mixed Turkish and Persian origin and a Hungarian mother and lived in the home countries of my parents who were followers of different religions. It became clear to me that the God of my Asian relations was the same as the God of my European relations. After studying painting, philosophy, and general linguistics, I discovered that the tarot is an applied system of art and meditation for the purpose of ecumenical improvement. This is then my ecumenical tarot, which I now pass on to you with descriptions of the arcana and of a few spreading systems of stimulating predictions. I wish you good fortune for every situation in which you use it. Yours with ecumenical greetings, Dr. Emile Kazanlar. I love that. I love that. I love that you know, the God is in the tarot, that God is in the tarot, just like La Maison Dieu, the house of God. I love that it's this, it's mentioned in the tarot. And um, I think I, I just, I'm not sure if I'm going to love working with this deck, you know, we never know that, but I know that it's a special one. I have a thing for vintage decks, meaning I hardly ever buy decks new. Um, this is in great condition, but I am trying to say that I love the idea of this deck, for sure, because all of these different gods, right, they all have the same... How did he put it in the beginning? The ecumenical attitude allows that different religions lead equally to God. So... I'm definitely going to have to go through this deck um, in my own time to really zoom in. Okay, so it looks like the cups all have this red border. The wands have this slightly lighter blue color. I particularly like this card, obviously, because there's an elephant in it. Although maybe not a very happy card because it's the Ten of Wands. A bit of a darker blue for the swords. And... The coins are mostly black or brown. Should I shuffle it? Yeah, let's just shuffle it. Let's see which card we get. I know it will shuffle well. I'm not shuffling in the two significator cards. Um, it'll give me something to do, you know, when I need to put it back in order to study it or to look through it some more. Shall I just immediately ruin it and edge the deck? <laughs> I feel a little bit, having this deck, having this rare deck, and it's a special deck also, right? I feel a little bit uh, closer to Naha from 22 Teachings because this was her um, main deck, deck for readings with clients and she has an entire video about it, you should check it out. Um, and also Kasha from Tarot Map. This was her first deck. <laughs> so some pretty good tarot reading, readers from uh, what I know started off with this one. Or, you know, have used this a lot. It's crazy how new it is. This must have been opened fairly recently and then sold to me. So... I'm not going to read it from my head, I'm going to look in the booklet. This one. 
Ooh, it says Netzach, Seven of Swords. So the book says, in the positive position, the meaning of this card is drawn from Netzach, and in the negative, from Nergal. The picture shows the magical protection and spiritual defense that are taught to the pharaohs by the high priests and are symbolized by the stars, the pyramids, and the spiritual presence of the pharaohs after their death and by the seven swords. This card stands for the spiritual power of ancient Egypt, which was sufficient for its defense. Dividatory character in the positive position, beware, avoid any direct confrontation with your enemy. He has the upper hand. Be cunning and sensible. There is great danger, but there is also the possibility of overcoming it without drawing up battle plans. In the negative position, you capitulate unconditionally when the victory is almost won because you do not have enough patience or endurance. <laughs> All right, well, am I spotting a little Picard nudge here with this, these four swords here and then the three swords there? Hmm. All I can say is this deck is really cool with all this detail in it. I think that this is an incredible deck. I don't think I'll ever get bored with this one. I don't know if I'll be able to read it again. Maybe, you know, more intuitively or using the little booklet or finding the book online because this is also, of course, when the deck goes out of print, the book also, you know, vanishes. <laughs> so. Um, I'm very happy with this. It's a beautiful pack of cards, feels really good, and um, yeah, I'm going to enjoy it. So thank you so much for being here. Let me know if you have this deck, if you want this deck, if you've been eyeing this deck, because honestly I found this, found this on a Dutch selling site and I tried checking eBay nowhere did they sell because of not tarot so i just decided to pay the price that they were asking at the time which was already reduced from the first time it was up so yeah that's kind of what i did and i don't think i regret it what else would i have done with that amount get four other decks i don't know it's just <laughs> i'd rather have one really cool one so yeah let me know uh maybe one of the cards that i showed which one was your favorite i know that's a difficult one or if you have this deck how does it read for you do you feel that it's more of a picard or a marseille or maybe more rider waite smith i do see some rider waite smith imagery in there but i also really see toth maybe it's you know really um a, a combination of everything it's really just all the systems together because after all it's all of these cultures and religions put together in the same deck as well and i think that it's beautiful that it's really saying that the tarot is for for everyone right it's for anyone who is um, interested in this type of stuff so thanks so much for being here i will see you all next week mm -hmm.